Well, across the state and the nation, a record number of fentanyl overdose deaths were reported last year. Now, one senator is hoping to curb that trend by going after the people putting this deadly drug on the streets. Senator Melissa Melendez joins us now to discuss SB 350. Senator, good to see you tonight. Well, Ginger, it's good to be on with you again, and thank you for having me and give me a chance to talk about this bill. I'm um, thrilled because you know, this you're actually yeah. reintroducing it tomorrow, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we are. You know, they killed it last year, um, but I was not deterred because I have too many parents who are coming to me saying they really want this bill to pass. So we're going to try again. Uh, you know, you and I talked, uh, I think, last year about the fact that if we can't get it through committee, maybe we'll try a ballot measure, take it directly to the voters. We have to raise the funds to do that. But this is too serious of an issue to just throw our hands in the air and say, well, we tried and, and let's move on. There's too many people dying from this drug. Not one county in California had numbers that weren't in the 54 percent and up. I mean, I saw one county that was over a 200 percent spike in fentanyl deaths for last year. So what is the thinking from the other side who killed this this bill last year as far as that it's not worth our time or that it's not an issue? Well, some of the things I heard was, you know, if you get rid of, if you put one drug dealer in prison, another one will just take his or her place. And, you know, with that kind of thinking, well, then why have any laws? Why have, you know, a speed limit on the freeway if people are another person just going to come along and speed or sell alcohol to minors? I mean, that's a nonsense type of argument. And it is an epidemic. I mean, if you look not just in California, but across this country, this, I mean, my God, this drug is getting into every everything. It's not just in pills anymore. It's literally in, you know, any type of, of drug that someone might use. It's finding its way into marijuana now. It's finding its way in, in all sorts of areas and it's killing people. It's not, you know, I get a little frustrated when I hear some of the folks out there call it an overdose because it's not an overdose. People have no idea that they're taking fentanyl, the, you know, the ones who are dying from, from taking just one pill because they think they're taking one thing and they end up with something else. So we have got to do something. It's not by any means, you know, something that's going to cure the problem entirely, but we can't just stand by and watch this happen. I mean, look what happened, for instance, with the opioid epidemic. I mean, did the government stand by and say, well, there's nothing we can do. People are going to use opioids. Of course not. The government stepped in and tried to put some measures in place to curb that. And we were successful in some parts of doing that. But this is this is too much. This is we've got to do something. So the focus of the bill as I, I alluded to in that intro, was to go after the folks putting it on the streets. Tell me how this is unique. So just like with the DUI, if you get popped for a DUI, you go before the judge and the judge is going to tell you this is dangerous behavior. If you do this again and someone ends up dying as a result of this, you could be charged with murder. Not a guarantee, but the DAs could charge you with murder. It's the same thing for this. If you get popped for dealing fentanyl, the judge is going to tell you the same thing. And it's going to be in your record that you acknowledge Yes, the judge told me this is dangerous behavior. It could kill someone. And if my drugs that I'm selling and distributing end up killing someone, I could face murder charges if someone dies as the result of it. It's very simple. We're already doing it with DUIs. I see no reason why we shouldn't do it with fentanyl. Yeah, preventative measures. It sounds right. very proactive. Well, there's another law I want to ask you about. Um, SB 1383, separating the waste. <laughs> it's now in effect. Yeah. It's a thing now. Yeah. It's a thing. Um, it's funny, you know, I got a, a message from a friend of mine who lives in, um, I think it's, I think she's in the LA County area. And this whole notice that she got in the mail about how they have to separate their food waste and that, you know, it's possible that the waste collectors will be checking the trash to make sure people aren't putting banana peels in there with the regular trash, which I'm not exactly certain how that's going to work. I think they've got better things to do. But that's the rule now. You have to put all your food waste, so your coffee grounds, your chicken bones, your banana peels, all that in a separate container you can't just put it in your trash bag anymore and you're, it's supposed to go in your green waste can. So, and then what I, happens, know, <laughs> what happens if they find that banana peel? <laughs> well, you are in a lot of trouble. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know, you know what, you could be fined. I know that the cities, because if the cities say, well, we're not going to comply, we're not going to provide these, you know, different um, types of bins for this food waste. The cities could be fined. It's written into the bill that the cities could fine you know, their citizens, I suppose. I just, I'm at a loss as to how someone would discover that. 
I mean, unless the waste collectors are literally out there digging through people's garbage, I understand they're trying to cut down on that waste that goes in the landfills and, you know, create some methane gas. But I mean, my goodness, this is this is really going very far. And there's only I, I mean, I think there's a couple of states that target more businesses for doing this type of thing. But I think we're the first ones that are targeting just the average citizen in their home. Yeah, it's very interesting times to focus on. And I get it. I'm not uh, saying that it's not an important issue. And obviously we want to take be good stewards of our environment. But we've got folks dying uh, needlessly mm -hmm. from fentanyl, and there's no doubt about it. I like the fact that you paralleled it to the opioid crisis that uh, we also saw. Senator, thank you for all the work you're doing. Uh, of course, we're going to be watching it. SB 350 getting reintroduced tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Thank you. Thanks, Ginger. Okay.